This week on Royally Us, we are breaking down Harry and Meghan's shocking step back from the royal family. I want you to hear the truth from me, as much as I can share, not as a prince or a duke, but as Harry, the same person that many of you have watched grow up over the last 35 years. Plus, we take a look at the clues Harry and Meghan may have dropped in the months leading up to the announcement. My British friend said to me, I'm sure he's great. You shouldn't do it, because the British tabloids will destroy your life. We are checking in with royal expert Victoria Howard, who is on the ground in London and is setting all the rumors straight. And finally, what have the royal kids been up to this week? We have all the answers. Hello to our fellow royal lovers, and welcome to the premiere episode of Royally Us, where each week we will give you a royal roundup on our favorite family. I'm your host, Christina Garibaldi, and I am joined by royal commentator Carly Ledbetter. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for having of me. Of course, of course. Now, Carly is a royal expert from Huffington Post and will help me break down everything on the royal beat. And we have a lot to get to. There is so much royal news happening. Where do we even begin? Uh, well, we have <laughs> to begin with Harry and Meghan. Yes. So, yes, here we are going to break down everything, our royal headlines and our royal roundup. So, on January 19th, Harry spoke out for the very first time about his decision to step back as a senior member of the royal family. Now, he revealed that this, that this decision was not made lightly and that it brought him great sadness. Let's take a listen. For those reasons, it brings me great sadness that it has come to this. The decision that I have made for my wife and I to step back is not one I made lightly. It was so many months of talks after so many years of challenges. And I know I haven't always gotten it right, but as far as this goes, there really was no other option. So I know for me, when I watched Harry make this statement, yeah. I felt so bad for him. I, right? I really did, did too. I mean, it was so emotional. And mm -hmm. in the six minute long speech, he talked about there being no other option for him. So I think you really looked at Harry and saw a person that's really suffering and really trying to do their best for mm -hmm. the family in the circumstances that they're given. Yeah. I mean, what do you think that he was hoping when he presented this to the Queen? What do you think that he was hoping the outcome would be? I think he was hoping that things would mostly stay the same. Mm -hmm. I think he still wanted to work with the royal family. He said that he and Meghan still wanted to serve the crown. And Queen Elizabeth and I think the Queen and the palace were sort of like you can't have it both yeah. ways you're either in or you're out and yeah. unfortunately he's out yeah like you can't have your royal cake and eat it too right, right? exactly <laughs> exactly but, but this he said which I don't think a lot of people knew was months in the making yeah it, it really was and mm -hmm. the Queen finally acknowledged also that it had been months in the making mm -hmm. over the weekend and I think you know we've seen a lot of now clues looking back at yeah. what Harry and Meghan have sort of been trying to tell us. Right. I mean, what do you think the Queen was thinking when, you know, Harry was like, so I don't really want to do this anymore, right. but I still want to serve you. Right. I think it was probably really shocking to her yeah. because she thinks that being the Queen and being royalty is a divine right. and. Even if you kind of don't like the job, you're born into it. And mm -hmm. so you kind of have to do it. Yeah. And Harry said that before, too. So I think, you know, she's probably known that Harry's been unhappy for a little while, but stepping back completely must have been a shock. Yeah, I know that we have heard, we got reporting that, you know, even Prince William was blindsided by right. everything. Prince Charles was livid right. that this was happening because this kind of almost rewrites history in a way. It really does. I mean, this is just one of the biggest royal moments we'll probably ever witness yeah. in our lifetime, which is and really crazy cool to that we're like living through it. I know, I know. We're <laughs> right. living through the crown. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we heard that they had 20 minutes before Harry said that he was releasing the Instagram. Uh, we also heard that the son was possibly thinking of leaking the news, so mm -hmm. that's why Harry and Meghan jumped in front of it. Yeah. Oh, to be a fly on the palace wall. I can't even imagine. <laughs> I can't even imagine what's me, what must be going down. But I think a lot of this probably had to do with the press. I mean, like you said, you know, they were uh, the sun was about to kind of blow this story up. Right. And they have been battling with the press for years. Forever. And mm -hmm. even when Prince Harry um, announced that he was dating Meghan, he did it two days after the Daily Mail published something super racist talking about mm -hmm. Meghan's rich and exotic DNA, mm -hmm. saying that his her mom had dreadlocks and was born on the wrong side of the track. And so even when Harry w finally confirmed that he was dating Meghan, he said, you have to stop this racist and sexist treatment of my girlfriend. And mm -hmm. obviously now it's 2020 and that's still continuing. It's still continuing. It's yeah. crazy. You know, when I was watching Harry's speech, it kind of, and when I was doing research, I came upon the speech of Princess Diana back in 1993 yeah. when she kind of decided to take a step back from public life as well right. and kind of blamed the media about this and wanted to spend more time with her kids. And we actually had this, so take a look. 
my first priority will continue to be our children, William and Harry, who deserve as much love and care and attention as I am able to give, as well as a, an appreciation of the tradition into which they were born. So why, I mean, watching that, you see kind of, you know, her struggle with the media. I mean, we know, I mean, obviously, the media may have killed her. Right. You know, so this must have been something I, I would imagine that Princess Diana was a factor in this decision as well for Prince Harry. Definitely. I think, um, you know, when Princess Diana, she was driving with a drunk driver, the paparazzi were tailing her, and Harry and William have both spoken before that they know that photographers on the scene were um, photographing her, their mom as mm -hmm. she lay dying. And he's really spoken about his mom a lot in the past few months, saying every time he hears a camera click or a flash, it takes him back to his mom. And he said the stress that comes along with his royal role that mm -hmm. he has, and he's reminded of it every day yeah. and taken back to that horrible right. day. I mean, and we even saw in um, their ITV documentary when he says, right. you know, now I have a family to protect. And I think, you know, he, it kind of gives him a whole new perspective now that he has his son and his wife kind of knows what his mom was going through. Definitely. I think probably becoming a father um, triggered him in some way, seeing how much he wants to protect this little baby and protect his wife mm -hmm. and how his mom tried to do that for him. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So now that we know that Harry has taken a step back, the Queen has decided to, you know, basically kind of cut ties. Right. So what will Harry's role be going forward? So Harry and Meghan um, are losing their uh, his and her royal highness ties, and then they can still go to royal events at the invitation of the Queen. Mm -hmm. So if the Queen says, come to Trooping the Color in the summer, yeah. then we'll get to see Harry and Meghan again, but for now, I think for the next year, we'll get to see them live a really free royal life, mm -hmm. and if the Queen wants them home for Christmas or extends the invitation, you know, maybe we'll see them back oh God, there again. That's so crazy. I, I mean, he literally gave up Everything, everything that he knew right for the women that he for the woman that he loves it doesn't it's get like, more it, it's romantic than that right yeah. it's i mean it's kind of it's it's really it's it's insane it is it's a real life fairy tale and i think they've been through so many hard things mm -hmm. and hopefully now we'll get to see them you know live a life sort of paparazzi free mm -hmm. um him not being forced to speak to reporters when he doesn't want to and hopefully these tabloid stories start to disappear and stop attacking right. Megan. Yeah, so Harry is now in Canada. He He's on Vancouver Island. Yes. Reunited with Megan and Archie, and he, you, you know, you see the photos of him getting off the plane. I mean, smiling ear to ear. Right? Yeah. He's like, Elated. I am free. Right. I've <laughs> done I, it. Yes. Yeah. I am. I have made it. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I think same with the photos of Megan when. Yeah. Um, when we saw those paparazzi shots of her walking her dogs and mm -hmm. Archie, same as Harry, Beanie and all, just smiling from ear to ear. Yeah. Um, and apparently Harry and Meghan have already issued a warning to their lawyers. I reached out to their lawyers today um, where they're saying the paparazzi photos were taken illegally. So I think already we're seeing a battle yeah. with photographers who are camped out in their Canada house and how they're going to handle that from now on. They can't. They can't win. They can't escape. Right. They can't I escape. Know. Where can I they know. go? Yeah. I, honestly, <laughs> I, like build an underground bunker or right. something. Something super, super extreme. Super, super extreme. But yeah. like you, you mentioned earlier, that uh, the couple have been kind of giving us a little clues, or right. maybe over the course of the past couple months, kind of dropping hints that, you know, this was not the lifestyle for them. And Megan actually did this during the documentary on ITV. Let's take a look at that. It's not enough to just survive something, right? Like, that's not the point of life. You've got to thrive. You've got to feel happy. And I think I really tried to adopt this British sensibility of a stiff upper lip. I tried. I, I guess. really tried. Um, but I think that what that does internally is probably really damaging. I think when we first saw that video, everybody kind of started to sympathize with Meghan and kind of saw her in a different light. I mean, she basically said the British tabloids destroyed her life. She's a new mom, she's a new wife, and she She's basically kind of all alone. Yeah, she really is. And we saw her get really emotional in the interview and look like she was tearing up and say that her friends warned her against ma uh, marrying Harry because of the press and how bad it is. And I think over in the UK, we see the media as two separate things. There are tabloids and then there are you know, reporters that follow them around. And these tabloids have just been absolutely vicious mm -hmm. and just basically ordering hit pieces on Meghan. Or you have someone like Piers Morgan saying, you know, buck up, stop whining. You just had this huge video 
vacation, which you know we know is maternity leave, right. um, and saying you need to get back to your job. And I can't imagine being a new mom, being alone, like you said, mm -hmm. and sort of suffering, silently suffering yeah. in this role. I mean, I'm sure, you know, she doesn't have her mom out there. Right. She doesn't have any family. You know, all of her friends are back here. Her life is back here. She, you know, she kind, she kind of gave up everything for him, and now it's almost like he's doing it in return. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think even Princess Diana, when she was a part of the royal family, even though she had her family and her friends around, she also spoke of how isolating it was. So I can't even imagine if you move countries and yeah. don't have your friends nearby. Right. But a lot of people are putting the blame on Meghan because, you know, like we said before, she is changing history. She is kind of uprooting Harry. Harry, arguably, probably the most popular royal. Right. And now they're kind of taking him out of the spotlight, taking him away from his military duties, which I think is probably very important to him, too. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are putting the blame on her. They really are. And it's so interesting to me because I've been covering this royal beat for a while, been um, very obsessed with Harry yeah. separately <laughs> since I was very little. Um, but in this really groundbreaking 2017 interview with Angela Levin, who's a royal uh, biographer, he spoke of when he left the military that he just felt like he had no place in the monarchy. Mm. And so I think he's really always struggled. He even yeah. told her, I wanted out, but I was going to form my own role. Mm -hmm. So I think for Harry, being the spare, as he's called, he's struggled to find his place. William knows his place. William yeah. knows he'll be king. Um, he knows exactly what he has to do. And Harry's never really had that path to mm -hmm. follow. And now with Meghan and his family, I think he's found that future that right. he really wants. Yeah, they always say what the the heir and the spare, the spare is always going to yes. get the... Yes, can you imagine? <laughs> I, you know, right, like, but for me, I would be like, you know, I'd like to be the spare. You can kind of reap all the benefits, but right. not have to do all the heavy lifting. Exactly, <laughs> and I think for a while that was sort of enough for him. Like yeah. he um, had the structure of the military, he got to let loose with friends, and then as he got older, you know, I wonder if it was after leaving the military, it's sort of like, what's my life going to be now? Is it yeah. always going to be going to these appearances, answering the same questions, talking about my mom, mm -hmm. reliving my mom's death every time I see a camera. Yeah. Uh, and I think that just got to be too much. I mean, do you think that the British press is always going to kind of hate Megan in a way? I, I wonder. I mean, there's always the tinge of racism in yeah. literally everything that's written about her. Um, and I wonder if it'll get better now that she's in Canada. I mm -hmm. mean, now we'll see how Canadian newspapers and our own media mm -hmm. in the U.S. starts to follow them, especially if they move somewhere like Los Angeles. Sure. Imagine the paparazzi there. Imagine the paparazzi. Yeah. But it was like, what, I mean, what do you think that they're going to do going forward? Because we know that she has this voiceover deal with Disney. Right. Um, they said that a lot of the, pro that the proceeds are going to go to a charity. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are already like, oh, she already has her other foot back in Hollywood. Right. And I think... Um, but back in Hollywood also committed to conservation, mm -hmm. and I think that's what we're going to see going forward. Sort of Meghan and Harry, I envision a producing deal sort of like the Obamas got yes. with Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, and Harry's already producing a series with Apple TV, so maybe that'll be their, their yeah. Netflix deal. Um, and I think they'll still remain really committed to philanthropy and the causes that they support, like veterans, um, women's empowerment. But I think a lot of people are wondering if we're ever going to see her on screen again, which that would, again, be a very, very right. crazy moment. Well, we always say that she can play herself in the crown. She could. She absolutely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely could. could. Yeah, the timing is perfect. It really is. <laughs> Let's bring in royal expert Victoria Howard, who has been covering this story since it broke. She is joining us via Skype in London, and she is going to put all these royal rumors to rest. All right, Victoria, thank you so much for joining us. No I love your your sign in the background. God save the God queen. Save the queen. Need one of those. <laughs> so obviously the big news is Harry and Meghan. Harry, of course, spoke out for the first time over the weekend. What was kind of the reaction in London? What's kind of everybody buzzing about? I think most people weren't surprised at the resolution that, you know, the couple were completely stepping back from their royal duties. Um, but I think most people are disappointed that, you know, they couldn't work it out in the end because they are very popular. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there are any clear winners in this sort of arrangement? I think Harry and Meghan definitely have the better scenario here. You know, they are now completely free of any uh, palace confines or rules that to, to follow. So, um, you know, they can move in the commercial direction, which they seem to want to, to be financially independent, which was the aim uh, that they mentioned in their initial statement. So I think they're, they've definitely got the freedom now, um, but the palace is, is, is losing them. And it was so good to have them because they were so much more representative of the British public than um, other couples in the royal family. So William and, and Catherine, because, of course, you know, that Meghan is mixed race and 
Britain isn't just a white country. We are a very, very diverse community. So it was great having that more representation uh, within the family. Um, and I think the Queen was a bit disappointed about that, that they couldn't work it out. But she is a pragmatist. She understands that things don't always work and is keen to make the modern uh, the monarchy work for the modern day. Yeah, I think we were saying that earlier because Harry and Meghan, you know, arguably are the most popular royals at, the t uh, at this moment, I would imagine. And it's got to be so sad to see them go and kind of Harry, you know, leave the UK behind, settle down in Canada, you know, kind of start this whole new life over. Yeah, and I think people forget as well, um, the Queen isn't just the Queen, she's their grand. Right. You know, she, she's their grandmother. She has been there since they were small although you know they've probably got a slightly different relationship to most other people with their grandparents because of who they are they care about one another it's a family business and you know they they want things to work and not upset one another so I I think um, we have to remember that family element that goes on in the, the royal family and how they work that's so true. I like totally forget that she's his grandmother. <laughs> right. And that makes me think of, you know, William, who is future King of England, is also his brother. Right. And we've heard so much about this rift between William and Harry, you know, with him going to Canada now. Where do you think he stands with William? Yeah. I think they've definitely patched things up. So I, I do believe there was some tension between the households um, and, you know, whether that was the couples or just the brothers, I, I'm not too sure. But the fact that they released that joint statement together um, right. just before these crisis talks took place at Sandringham speaks volumes. You know, they came together to say what you're the, to the press what you're saying about us isn't true and we don't like it you know we may not always get on but we're brothers and I'm sure many of us know sometimes we hate our siblings but <laughs> yes. you have to and be there for them you right. know you have to do things sometimes and support one another mm -hmm. so I I think that they patched it up and although maybe the resolution wasn't what both of them wanted in you know either staying in the UK or working with the royal family still they are happy for one another that, you know, things are now moving forward, the solution's been found, and hopefully they're both going to be happier for it. Yeah, I mean, we spoke about this before that, you know, a lot of press kind of puts the blame on Megan, but do you think that this was a decision that Megan wanted or this was a decision that both Harry and Megan kind of agreed on together? I think the couple agreed this together. So like you say, so many people are trying to blame this on Meghan that she's taking Harry away from the royals and Britain. But that um, speech we heard from Harry recently, his very personal, emotive speech, specifically said, it's not a decision I made lightly. So he was definitely trying to make that clear to people that, you know, don't blame my wife. I'm I'm in the, the royal shoes, as it were, because he's obviously the, the grandson of the Queen. And it was his choice. Now, is this him telling us he is in that protector role as a husband and a father? I think it could be. Um, but I think he's also very keen to ensure that, that Meghan isn't you know, blamed for this because he's a grown man. He's 35. He's got his own mind. Well, it seems like they are you know, enjoying life in Canada. Right. You know, yeah. enjoying the snow. Enjoy. All smiles so far. All smiles so far. But it is interesting that Prince Charles is going to be financially supporting them for the time being, correct? Definitely. Uh, so Prince Charles has his own pot of money, his own income, that he voluntarily pays tax on, I will add. People don't think that the royals pay tax, but, but they do. Um, and this pays for the shortfall in any of William and Kate's or Harry and Meghan's um, office funding, you know, their clothing, travel, that's not part of official expenditure. So um, this plan that the palace has put together will be reviewed next year. So there's a 12 month sort of cooling down period or, you know, a bit of time to test out the waters. And it looks like maybe after that review, then Prince Charles will pull back some of that funding. But they're not casting them out to the darkness. They're, like I say, still family members and they, mm -hmm. they want to make it work. So interesting. But, you know, with this gigantic story, a lot of people are kind of going back into the history books and kind of looking into how this compares to other big stories in royal history. A lot of people have brought up King Edward um, because, as we know, he gave up the British throne for love. But, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts about that, Victoria? Yeah, I, I think um, people are pulling on that scenario because it's the 
one of the only ones you can think of where someone's said, I don't want to do the royal job anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's not uh, it's highly accurate in my view, sort of, you know, having studied the royals and, and the history of them. Um, two better examples probably would be his mother, Diana. She um, obviously divorced Charles in the mid 90s and then tried to work independently on some of her causes and with some of her patronages. And that worked for her in the short time she had outside of the royal family, of course, then um, shortly after she, she died. Um, and that did work, but she didn't seem to try to go down the commercial route too much. Um, I don't know if you remember the sale of her dresses. Mm. Uh, the oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that was you know, a fantastic way to, to actually raise some money. But that was for her charities to mm -hmm. you know raise their profile and help with any costs that they incur. Um, so the other one you probably won't have heard of at <laughs> all. Uh, it's Princess Patricia. Oh, now new she, name. New <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> she actually married um, a minor aristocrat in 1919, so just after the First World War. And she went into the church as Her Royal Highness Princess Patricia of Connaught, and she came out as Lady Ramsay. So on her marriage, she completely relinquished her royal titles and her royal status, the HRH. And the commercial bit comes in for her as um, she was a bit of an artist. She tried to use her talent to to raise money. Um, some of that was charitable work. Other others, other parts of it were, you know, for sort of personal gain. Um, but that's a really interesting anecdote, I think, because you don't think people, you know, gave up that much yeah. back in the day because there was less scrutiny and, um, you know, people weren't as perhaps against the monarchy as they might be today. But it, it did happen and she gave up everything to, to marry the man that she loved, which is a really romantic story. Interesting. I'm going to use that in trivia night. I know, I know. <laughs> I love it. Well, Victoria, thank you so, so much. This was such great insight. And now, we're, now we know some Even history. More, yeah, yeah, better informed. <laughs> thank you so much. Now, we know that Meghan has ruffled some royal feathers since she and Harry got together. So we decided to take a look back at some of the rules that she has broken. Having gone through this learning curve in the past year and a half, I did not have any understanding of just what it would be like. Not your typical duchess. Meghan Markle is proving that rules are made to be broken. Here are eight times she went against royal tradition. Because I'm from the States, you don't grow up with the same understanding of, of the royal family. The royal family has an unspoken policy about wearing pantyhose in public. However, when Meghan and Prince Harry announced their engagement, everyone couldn't help but notice her bare legs. And that giant rock, of course. Oh, Meghan, how are you feeling? They just can't keep their hands to themselves. Meghan and Harry are often snapped holding hands, which is something you rarely see from the other royal members. Now, Meghan broke several traditions at her May wedding to Prince Harry. First, she began her walk down the aisle alone and was later joined by Prince Charles. Next, she had a choir who performed a moving rendition of Stand By Me. Michael Curry for their sermon, which was definitely the highlight of the day, although some that were attending the wedding could argue it was her own speech at the royal reception. Imagine this tired old world when love is, is the way, when, when love is the way, unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive, when love is the way, then no child will go to bed hungry in this world ever again. No balcony photo ops here. Because the couple married at Windsor Castle, they did not kiss on the famed Buckingham Palace balcony. Instead, they opted for a smooch shortly after saying their vows. So that was a really stark difference out of the gate. However, when she did make her Buckingham balcony debut, she caused some controversy wearing an off-the-shoulder pale pink gown, which broke royal protocol because sleeves are a must. Now, typically the coat of arms is given to the bride's father, but since Thomas Markle is busy giving interviews about his daughter to the press, the crest went to Meghan herself. It's, um, you know, it's not... I wouldn't 
it's not, it's not easy for anybody. Now, royals and politics don't usually mix, but in February, Meghan spoke up about Time's Up and female empowerment during a panel discussion at the Royal Foundation. You'll often hear people say, well, you're helping women find their voices. And I fundamentally disagree with that because women don't need to find a voice. They have a voice, they need to feel empowered to use it, and people need to be encouraged to listen. And hugging, autographs, and selfies are not a norm for a royal, but apparently Meghan didn't get the memo. Looks like Meghan is making her own set of rules. Oh, Megan, breaking rules since day one. Yeah, oh, <laughs> crazy rules those are. Yeah. And they really are. I don't blame her for breaking some of those rules. Like, no pantyhose, like, come on. Right, yeah, changing up your nail polish, right. opening your own door, just crazy. Crazy, <laughs> how dare she? How dare she? So I want to get to my favorite segment of the show, Pint yes. Size Palace. Oh. We have to catch up with all the, the doings of the royal kids. We do. So what has our little baby Archie been up to? Little baby Archie is in Canada, living his best <laughs> eight month old life. Yes. Um, Harry said over the weekend that Archie saw snow for the first time so and it was bloody brilliant, which is the <laughs> cutest British way of putting that, right. I think. Um, so Archie probably a little bit colder than he than he was in the yeah, UK. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we saw him all bundled up walking yes. with Megan as well. So yes, yeah. definitely the little the little hat too and the booties. So, so cute. Yeah. I, I like He's loving Canada. I can't wait to see like the full photo of Archie with like yes. all his ginger hair. And and just can you imagine like, five years from now? Oh my god! It's so fun to look at all the other little ones. It like is. Prince it George is. And, and um, speaking of like looking at baby photos, um, right. Prince William had a little. Um, he was a little confused. He was. <laughs> yes. So last week, uh, Kate Middleton and Prince William went on a visit to the city of Bradford. Mm -hmm. And while they were there, someone had created this amazing confectionery display for them. And on some of the or some of the cupcakes, they had photos of William as a baby, Kate as a baby, and William could not tell if one photo was of him or of their daughter, That's Charlotte. Amazing. And he had to keep asking the audience, and finally they were like, that is you. Yeah, so. we're like, we promised, it's right, you. Right, right, it makes sense. He's probably never really looked at baby photos of himself That's, or all of them. I'm right. sure there are millions. Oh my God, those those kids are so cute. The archives, I know. Oh my God, I know. And then little <laughs> Prince George, he's been a little quiet since the holidays. Yes. But he, I mean, he had a big, a big photo shoot recently. He really did, mm -hmm. with Queen Elizabeth, Prince Charles, Prince William, and he actually um, was wearing pants for one of the first times. Um, so <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, so Prince George forever, it's been like royal style where he wears shorts most yeah. of the time, even in winter. Really? So in this portrait, the first thing that I was drawn to was the fact that he was wearing <laughs> pants. I didn't, wait, so why, do you know why that they have, they wear shorts yeah, all it's, the time? it's just like royal tradition and royal style that the, the young ones wear uh, shorts and very long socks. <laughs> so now that he's six, I guess he's graduated to pants. I'm definitely doing some more research. Definitely. On and then, you know, that now that you say that, I don't think I've ever seen Princess Charlotte in pants no. at all. No. Yes, always like a little skirt always or a dress little with the long socks. So many rules. Yeah, so they graduate <laughs> to pants at a certain point, and George has crossed that threshold. He's, he's done. Yeah, but he's I ready. wonder if he, like, has kind of started figuring out, like, what his life is like. Right. And I think with this photo shoot, sort mm -hmm. of with all of the other um, people who will become king or who are already queen, I think it's probably hit him. Like, one day I'll be like yeah. these people doing what they're doing. I don't know if... Uh, he knows all of the royal duties yet, but that must be a lot to take in for a six-year-old. Oh my God, totally. Yeah, or a five-year-old. Or, or yeah. yeah whatever. Just whatever age he was when <laughs> right. he realized like, he has this huge responsibility. Yeah, like I'm learning the alphabet and I'm also going to be king. So. Right, right. Imagine the fights with the siblings. Oh my God, I can't king. even imagine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> can't even imagine. Carly, thank you so much for breaking down everything royals with us. It was thank so much fun. Thank you so much. This was great. And thank you to Victoria. And make sure to tune in next week for everything royals on Royally Us.